I'm not going to do that. All right. <laughs> so let's be careful out there. How about protein? Um, is there like a target level of protein that we should? That yeah, that's a great question. For, yeah, that's a that's a terrific question. America is the most protein concerned nation I think in the world. My patients are constantly worrying about, talking about, and exchanging emails about protein. You know, it's like <coughs> protein. Got to talk about protein. <coughs> and I'd like to talk a little bit about that. How many of my patients do you think you've heard from, talked to, emails, listened to, total in your experience? With all the emails you've listened to and the months of research? Probably 35. Mm -hmm. And how many? Me? Yeah. About 50 recommending all this. Yeah. And how many? Yeah. How many? Just message boards. Yeah, yeah but how many? Yeah. yeah so the there's emails there are dozens or hundreds dozens, out there. and. Dozens. How many of you have run across anybody, any patient of mine with low protein? They talk about it a lot. They said that's yeah, that's right. They talk about it. That's all the time. Now, can you get low protein? Yeah, it's a possibility. But my patients are wound up over it, largely because there's a moderate incidence of malnutrition in the Roux and Y population, and sometimes Roux and Y surgeons will talk a lot about protein. <coughs> Have you talked to other patients of mine about what they eat? What do they eat? Right. All right. So protein is not a big deal for us. Okay. You don't need to be wound up or worrying about it or focused on it. Now it is true that some extra protein is good. Okay. So it is true that there's a good deal of research that a small amount of extra protein is good. And in fact, in the manual, we give you some advice. What we say is a little extra whey protein every day. But we don't say any more than that, and so we would like to turn down everybody's attention and concerns and fears about protein today, if we can, by saying, kind of relax. We have 30 people out of 4,000 that got too thin, malnourished and low protein. Pretty good. Pretty low risk. And I don't think that even if they had been real attentive to protein intake, it would have made any difference. They just had, in my opinion, too big a bypass. So when you ask about protein, which is a good thing to ask about, the first thing I'd like to say is relax. We don't have target grams per day or anything like that. What we say is you're going to have a wonderful life, we expect. You're going to be able to eat a normal, regular, healthy diet. And we recommend a healthy diet, not a focus on protein. So fresh fruits and vegetables and whole wheat foods and whole grain foods and then lean meats. But not in a, an intense focus on uh, any kind of protein intake. In fact, one of the complications of a bypass of any type is kidney stones. Okay? That's one of the reasons why we take the Tums. The calcium binds the oxalate. That's one of the reasons why orange juice is good because citrate binds the oxalate. Okay? So we want you to avoid kidney stones. High protein diets cause kidney stones. Relax as far as your concerns about protein. We expect you're going to do great, you're going to be healthy, and an intense focus on number of grams of protein today is unnecessary, unhelpful, and may contribute to kidney stones. So, good question. I guess I was just thinking about it in relationship again to the hair. You know, if there was sure. a relationship with the hair loss yes. to, you know, the malnutrition and, and that. Well, another way to put it, can you put hair back on by high-protein diets? No. Not that we know of. Can you have children in Biafra who are suffering from severe malnutrition called quasiorcor or marasmus? Those are severe protein calorie malnutrition, and don't they get hair loss? Yeah. Some people think some of that zinc, you know, part of that malnutrition. But uh, you can get hair loss from anesthesia. You can get hair loss from profound protein calorie malnutrition, uh, we certainly see it after our patients uh, have surgery. There is a risk of hair loss. Um, there is their low calories. I'm not sure an intense focus on grams per day of protein will make any difference. In fact, I feel strongly that that's unwise. A little extra protein. The foundational principles for you to take home for how to guide your eating after surgery is very simple, common sense, and straightforward. 
eat a healthy diet. Okay? There's not a lot of unusual things, but it's eat a healthy diet. Fresh fruits and vegetables. This is the same kind of advice we think the majority of physicians and dietitians recommend around the country. <clears throat> a real intense focus on unusual dietary things we don't think is real reasonable. A little bit of supplements we do think uh, make some sense, but we try to kind of temper that so we can give you an enjoyable lifestyle. 